Wow. Hey guys, welcome back to News for the Sign. If we discuss comics, movies, games, and more. Glad to be doing a full face video right here. Here to talk to you about Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, Spider-Man No Way Home was just incredible. It was amazing, okay? And I mean every single word of it. Like, it, it was an incredible movie. I loved it. And, you know, there are just minor problems, but aside from that, the movie was fantastic. Now, I've been actually thinking about how to do this review. How do I do it without getting into spoilers? Because in order for me to fully express myself, I feel like I need to get into spoiler territory. But I won't. So this is a non-spoilery review, so don't worry. I will be posting my spoiler review sometime maybe next week. Just give it a little time. Make sure that a lot of people, at least the majority of you, have seen Spider-Man No Way Home. But if you haven't, I urge you to go check it out as soon as you can because I think you're all going to love it. Anyways, Spider-Man No Way Home stars, of course, Tom Holland as Peter Parker Spider-Man, Zendaya as MJ Michelle Jones, and of course, Jacob Batalon as Ned Leeds, and some other characters like Marissa Tomei, who plays Aunt May. And this movie, by far, out of the Homecoming trilogy, it is the best Spider-Man film. Now, I don't know why, but I just had wished that John Watts had put a little bit more effort in as far as making a good quality replay value Spider-Man film, such as Spider-Man Far From Home, to say the least. Because Spider-Man Far From Home is my least favorite out of the three. Homecoming was decent. It was a very good time. I really enjoyed Tom Holland in that film. And he was great in Civil War, of course, when he first appeared in Captain America Civil War. But Spider-Man No Way Home, by all means, and when I say this, Spider-Man No Way Home is a Spider-Man film. And what I mean to say is that if you've been disliking Tom Holland as Spider-Man Peter Parker... Because he's got like this Iron Manification, like it's a term that I actually found out uh, by reading an article recently, and I did a video about it. Because of the Iron Manification that Tom Holland's Peter Parker Spider Man has had throughout the past MCU movies, if you disliked that aspect about him, well, you're gonna love Spider Man No Way Home because Tom Holland is fantastic in this movie, and I think he's the best Spider Man he's been since those films. Like, he is so Spider Man. Like, in the other movies, he was more like Spider Kid. Spider-Boy, Spider-Teenager, but this one, he's Spider-Man, okay? He is practically on his own in this movie. Uh, the villains, of course, I'm going to talk about them. This isn't really considered a spoiler because if you've seen the trailers, well, you would know that at least five villains do make an appearance in this film. And they're done really well because I did have my, you know, where I was worried a bit and how they were going to handle that because you know that every time a third Spider-Man movie comes out, Sony just has like this horrible habit of putting so many characters into the film that they turn out to be quite forgettable, honestly, and it always ends up being a total mess. Well, that's not the case. Thankfully, we can take advantage of the fact that we've seen a lot of these villains in past Spider-Man films, such as Doc Ock, played by Alfred Molina, Green Goblin, played by Willem Dafoe, Sandman, played by Thomas Hayden Church, Reese Fonz, who plays the Lizard, and of course, Jamie Foxx, who plays the Electro who actually spoiled the film so much earlier this year uh, by spoiling his character's appearance in the film. But aside from that, it's not really a spoiler because you know that these characters are in the film and they all appear in the trailer. But I'll tell you this, though. If you think that was the moneymaker, if you think that me telling you that these characters are in the film is a spoiler, you are so wrong because that's not what you're going to be going to the theater for. Yes, it's very exciting to see those villains make an appearance and fight Tom Holland's Peter Parker, but... Honestly, I'm only telling you a quarter of the spoilers, if you want to call it that, because it's not really spoilers at all. It's in the trailer. And if you were just lucky enough to miss the spoilers entirely, like the TV spots and everything, then you know what? Good for you. I'm sorry for revealing the fact that these characters are in the movie, even though they appear in the trailers. But anyways, they were all fantastic. The one that really stood out to me personally, and it hit me on a personal level, because I've seen the classic Spider-Man movies, such as, you know, the ones that star Tobey Maguire. Uh, where um, Norman Osborn, played by Willem Dafoe, makes an appearance. He returns as the Green Goblin, Norman Osborn. And of course, uh, Dr. Otto Octavius, who's played by Alfred Molina, makes an appearance as well in this film. And he they're both fantastic. The one that really stuck out out of all five villains really was Norman Osborn. Gr Willem Dafoe's with Norman Osborn, Green Goblin, was amazing. And I loved his performance. And you can really tell that Willem Dafoe was having such a great freaking time with his role. And he was happy to be in back in the role as, you know, the Green Goblin Norman Osborn. I mean, he went all out. He went he went 120% hard on this one. I only had wished that a little bit more time was given to Willem Dafoe's character. 
uh, because I would have loved to see more of that. But every time he was on screen, he would really steal the show. I mean, especially whenever he was talking, whenever he spoke, he would sound so menacing and threatening. And it was just a great performance. That carrot Green Goblin is his role. And it was just fantastic. It was great to see these characters. And not to mention to see Tom Holland and Peter Parker interacting with past Spider-Man villains was the cherry on top. It was fantastic. And honestly, this movie really throws a lot at you. And I think it really challenges the characters at best out of all the Spider-Man MCU movies. Like I'm talking about Homecoming and Far From Home. Those were just a walk in the park compared to what No Way Home throws at Peter Parker in this film. I mean, this movie is really heartbreaking. And there's a, there's a lot of moments that are like, you know, there's a lot of sad moments. There's heartbreaking moments. And it's really overall overwhelming for Peter Parker in this film. And Tom Holland does a fantastic job just acting in that kind of situation. Uh, if you guys don't know the premise, obviously, by now, basically, Peter Parker's identity is revealed to the world thanks to Mysterio, who uploaded that video, you know, revealing his identity as Spider-Man to the world. And now, since Peter's identity has been revealed to the world, he must go seek Doctor Strange for help to see if Doctor Strange can cast a spell in making the world forget who he really is. But because Peter Parker keeps talking and worried about the people that he loves that are, that are gonna forget about him, Doctor Strange messes up the entire spell, allowing people from different universes, the villains from these uh, different Spider-Man universes to cross over into the main MCU timeline, causing havoc. It was great to see. I really had a great time with this movie. There were moments where I laughed. There were actually quite a bit of few Easter eggs in this movie. In particular, this is not really a spoiler because Tom Holland already went public with this post. Uh, he posted on social media if you know that he's played Spider-Man PS4. And if you play Spider-Man PS4, you're going to know exactly what Easter eggs I'm referring to. But they're in there, so definitely take a close look because when it happens, it's very brief, but it does happen. And aside from Easter eggs, there are different Easter eggs, obviously, just littered all over the place in this film. So definitely go ahead and look for those as well carefully because you're going to have a great time with that. But, but aside from that, the performances were wonderful, especially Tom Holland's Peter Parker. He really stood out the most. I, I can't praise his performance enough because I think what I wanted from the MCU Spider-Man, and this is something that I personally felt, and I'm sure a lot of you Spider-Man fans have felt this, throughout these MCU movies and throughout his appearances in the MCU and different various films like the Avengers and Captain America and his Spider-Man movies, I've always felt that this Peter Parker has had a bit of a handicap, more like uh, he's been spoon-fed way too much. To elaborate further is that he's had too much help especially from Tony Stark, Iron Man, and other people. It, it, I feel like he was always incompetent and he couldn't really resolve his own problems. But this one, like I said before a little earlier, that Peter Parker really is challenged here. And he basically resolves his issues on his own for the most part. I mean, obviously, Spider-Man isn't Spider-Man without a little help, right? So he does get help, but at the same time, he learns how to, like come to terms with his actions i guess you can say like this movie also in tone tone wise is the darkest out of all three of them and i kind of wanted to see that especially you know how a lot of the comics in spider-man there are moments where it just peter parker just goes to a very dark place and he becomes someone that you wouldn't want to trifle with but this one really brings that to light here or should i say to the dark here because this movie has everything that a spider-man fan has always wanted in an mcu spider-man movie you know, those moments were in, like, past Spider-Man movies. But this one, it has a good moment. And it makes you wonder, like, hmm, would Spider-Man really do such a thing? Like, you know, when, like, there's a moment in the movie where something happens and Peter isn't really himself in a way. But, like, at the same time, you're like, you know what? He's gone to a dark place. And only Spider-Man fans would probably know. But you need to see it for yourself because I cannot tell you, and I and I think I've spoken too much. Anyways, guys, the movie is fantastic. I urge you to watch Spider-Man No Way Home. It is a great movie. Spider-Man No Way Home is, by all means, a very entertaining and amazing Spider-Man film. You will laugh, you will cry, you will grin from eye to eye, which is why I'm going to give Spider-Man No Way Home a 9 out of 10. Stay for the ending, because there's also like two post credit scenes, but the very end, the like the last final scene of this movie was beautiful. It's everything that a Spider-Man fan could always want. For those of you older folks out there who've been around since like the 60s, every Spider-Man fan from every single generation is going to love the last and final scene. It was a beautiful scene. 
it was a beautiful ending and i was like oh my god they did this they they did it they it, it's it's incredible what they just did and i, I just i loved it <laughs> i loved it this movie was amazing anyways guys that's my review for spider-man no way home what did you think of it have you seen the film if you have do not post any spoilers not just yet maybe wait about a week and then we can go ahead and talk about it in the comment section but for now try not to post some spoilers because i know people are not going to be able to watch it tonight and they're probably going to most likely watch it either Saturday, tomorrow, or if not, Sunday. But anyways, wait about a week or so, then start talking in the comment section, and then we can have a good time talking about the spoilers. But thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for my spoiler review of Spider-Man No Way Home. That's coming really soon. And once again, guys, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click on that bell notification so you don't miss anything. I'll see you all in the next comic panel.